Now that we have the basic query in place, there's a couple of different ways we can filter it to produce some more interesting results. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is make a copy of the query and paste that in. And I'll go ahead and put a go statement to break the previous batch. So the way you filter data, select specific rows, is by using a WHERE clause. And WHERE comes before order by and after this from here. So WHERE. And then I can put any Boolean condition, that is, any condition that returns true or false here. And so the first thing I'm going to do is select on a particular name. So for example, I can say WHERE name equal mark. And this is going to only return the rows where the name is equal to mark. Like so. And then to make it a little better for viewing, I can order by year. So this is going to be the popularity of the name MARC on a year-by-year -year basis starting from the first year that we have data for in this database, 1915, all the way through the last year. Actually, it says top 50 here, but now we only have 100 and so, some odd years here. So get rid of the top 50 because I know there's not too many results coming back. And now I have the results from 1915 year by year through 2014. So there's one interesting way of slicing the data up. Now I can also use for a particular year like 1962, I can order by count in descending order and I'll take the top 50 again here because this time I will have a lot of names coming back. So here are the most popular names from 1962 for babies born in 1962. And I see Michael, David, John, James, Robert, and Mark are the most popular names for boy babies. And then Lisa, Mary, Susan, Karen, Linda, and so on, are the most popular name for girl babies. Now, I might want to filter both on a particular year and also on a particular gender. So for example, let's say I only want to see girl babies in 1962. Here I have the part that selects for 1962, but I can also add Boolean combination. So like and gender equals F. So here are all the girl babies, or at least the top 50 girl babies in 1962. So what if I want to include a combination? So let's go ahead and select this query again, copy that, move this down here. So what if I want to know both babies with the name Mark and also babies with the name M-A-R-K? Well, I can use an OR for that. Like so. And now I get both names, M-A-R-C and M-A-R-K. But you'll notice that there are some girl babies named Mark as well, relatively few. But some. And uh, what if I want to filter those out? Well, once again, I can go ahead and add an AND clause, like so. But this isn't quite going to do what I want it to do. So let's actually look at what this returns. 
And you'll notice that uh, it filtered the results. Well, it didn't actually filter the results, right? Because I still have male babies coming in. But if you look carefully, what you're going to see is that female babies are M-A-R-K. So what's going on here? Well, the order of operations is a little different from some programming languages that you might be familiar with. In most programming languages, AND and OR are at the same level of precedence, and so this is going to do this OR that first, and then restrict using that. But in SQL, AND actually has precedence over OR, which means that First, we're calculating name equal mark and gender equal female. So like these female babies named Mark, here's one with a C. And then we're oring that with babies that are named M-A-R-C. So we get only female babies named Mark, but both male and female babies named M-A-R-C. I'm sorry, female babies with M-A-R-K and both male and female babies named MARC. So if I want to fix this, there's two ways of doing it. The hard way is to reorder these clauses so that the logic is right. Um, and I'll do that in a second. The easy way is to use parentheses to force these things to be grouped. So I'm going to put parentheses here and here. And the parentheses are always going to have precedent. So first, this is going to say name is Mark or name is Mark, and then it's going to only show the female babies after that. So if I execute this query, now I get the correct results. So I get all of the female babies named Mark. But that wasn't actually what I wanted. What I wanted was the male babies named Mark. And uh, I could change gender equal female, but I can also do and not gender equal female. So here are the male, male babies named Mark. Now this is going to be the same as if I said gender equal male or gender not equal female. So there's a couple of different ways to write that expression. So they all return the same thing. So let's write a version of this that uses AND correctly without using parentheses. So I know that AND is going to take precedence over OR. So if I do AND gender equals male, that's only going to take male babies named M-A-R-C. And then if I add and gender equals male here as well, now this is going to be male babies named M-A-R-C or male babies named M-A-R-K. So that works as well. Now, one other way of writing this query that's going to be very important later on when we get to subqueries is by using the in operator. So let me copy this. And I am going to change this to where name in, and then I put a set of values. So open paren, close paren, this is going to be a set of values. And then the first value is M-A-R-C, second value M-A-R-K, like so. And this is going to match if name is either M-A-R-C or M-A-R-K. So once again, I get the same results. I get M-A-R-C and M-A-R-K. Now, as I said, this syntax is going to be more important when we get to subqueries, but it's already kind of useful if you have a fairly long list of things. So, for example, let me write another query, and I want to know all of the names that have the same metaphone as Mark. 
So I'm going to start with select name from all data where metaphone equals MRK. And I'm not going to get a huge list coming back, so I probably don't need to take the top, but, uh, but I'll go ahead and try this query. So here are all the names that have the same metaphone MRK. So I get uh, Mark, Mark, Marco, Mauricio, Marky, Morag, Mark, Marque, and Mary Kay, and so on and so forth. So fair number of names, but uh, we ended up with a couple thousand. But you'll notice that a lot of these are repeats, and uh, that's not really what I want. What I want is a set of distinct names where each name appears only once in this list. And I can add a keyword to do that, distinct. So without distinct, it's going to return all of the results, one per line, even if they're duplicates. With the distinct keyword, it's going to do this. So here's a list of all of the distinct names that have the metaphone MRK. And we see there's under 100 of those. Now, how about if we just want male names that have the metaphone MRK? and gender equals male. So now that we have a list of names, we can also order them by name count. So let's order by name count descending order, so the most popular variants at the top, And if I try to do this, I'm going to get an error. So order by items must appear in the select list if select distinct is specified. Basically, what it's trying to do when I use this distinct here, it's folding up all of the rows that have MARC in them into one row. But some of those rows that have MARC in them have different name counts than other rows. So it knows how to combine MARC with MARC. That's just MARC. But what does it do with the name counts? If I have a name count in 1914, like 50,000, and a name count in 2014, like uh, you know 100,000, how does it combine those two numbers? Well, I haven't really told it, and so it doesn't know how to do that. But what I can do instead is filter by year. So I'm going to say for a particular year, like 1962, This should work. So this is going to be all of the names that have the metaphone MRK ordered in descending order by name count in the year 1962. And you'll notice that even though I'm not showing year and I'm not showing name count, I'm using them in the where clause and in the order by clause, I don't have to put them in the select clause if I don't want to. Um, but it is handy to actually look at them to see what the results mean coming back. So in particular, I want to include name count here. And now I have the name, the name count in descending order. And I can see that uh, Mark, Mark, Marco, Marco, Merrick, Mark, Mark, and Mark are eh, somewhat popular. The rest of these names, if you have like five or fewer occurrences, uh, I'm sorry, if you have less than five, they don't make it on the list at all. So five is the minimum number for the Census Bureau to actually report that name. And that's where this data comes from is the Census Bureau. But what if I want to take just the most popular variants? So I want to take Mark, Mark, Marco, Marco, and Merrick. And I want to produce this kind of result here but only for the most popular variants. Well, I can do that pretty easily just by adding them to the set here. So I'm going to add Mark, 
Mark Marco. Whoops. And we'll do one more, Merrick. So here are the most popular name variants of the name Mark, ordered by year from 1915 through 2014. And I can see that in early years, actually let's order first by year, but then if they're tied, if it's all in the same year, what I wanna do is order by name count in descending order. So I can do that by saying year comma, and then if it's a tie on year, order by name count in descending order. So this is gonna show me year by year, the most popular variants of Mark. So should probably be M-A-R-K all the way through. So M-A-R-K, M-A-R-K, M-A-R-K. Yeah. Yeah, M-A-R-K. Oh. Um, yeah, pretty much M-A-R-K all the way through. 